This is the uploading files with Blazor mini course. In this video, we're going to upload a file to the server using Blazor server. We'll look at how to use the multi-select option, how to filter the files by type, how to limit the file size and more. This video is part of a mini course around uploading files. I would encourage you to click on the playlist link in the description and use it to go through the course in order. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Tim Corey and it's my goal to make learning C Sharp easier. I have hundreds of videos here on YouTube with more coming out each week. I have a podcast answering questions developers have, and I provide training courses designed to give you the real world training and experience needed to succeed in today's marketplace. You can find all the resources I have to offer at imtimcorey.com. Okay, let's jump into Visual Studio and we're gonna start by creating a new project. Now, we've already said we're gonna choose Blazor Server as our project type because it's the, the option we decide to choose. Now, you could choose MVC, you could choose API, you could choose Razor Pages, you could choose Blazor WebAssembly, and all of them will allow file uploads, although each has their own quirks about how to do it. We're gonna choose Blazor Server in this course. So I'm gonna choose the full template. Note that if you search for uh, Blazor, you're gonna find that there's more than one template. In fact, there's now a blank template, which of course is going to wait and um, the filter's not gonna work on me. There we go. Um, so it's going to have the Blazor Server app, also the Blazor Server empty app. The difference here is if you don't want all of the, um, the pre-set up stuff, all the things that, you know, uh, the weather uh, page, the counter page, and the other demo stuff, um, you can choose the empty app. Just note that will also remove the Bootstrap 5 styling and all the icons and other things as well. So because this is a demo application, I wanna show you something really quick and easy and not have to do a whole lot of setup, I am gonna choose the Blazor Server app not the empty template. But just know, if you're gonna start a brand new project, it might be simpler to start here. So we're going to choose this because this is what we're gonna do for a demo, not for production. So we're gonna choose, we're gonna call this um, up, upload files app, uh, or upload files, yeah, app. And we'll call this upload files uh, SLN for upload file solution. I'll hit next, and we're gonna use .NET 7 for this. And no authentication. We could get into authentication because authentication will be important when you're allowing people to upload files. You really don't wanna allow anonymous file uploading, if for no other reason than the fact that you can't really associate the file with a user. But there's also some security implications around you know, bots doing it for you and so many other things. So we really want to be authenticated, but in this demo, we're not going to set up authentication. And the reason why is because to do so would mean a whole lot of extra work that wouldn't be around actually file uploading. It would be around securing and authenticating users and verification and, and all the rest. We'd still probably cut some corners because it's a demo environment and we don't want to do everything like two-factor authentication and so on. That's a whole nother series. Um, but for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick with no authentication, but in the future, I'm gonna show you, we are actually gonna simulate a logged in user. And that way we can see what it would look like. So we're gonna leave all these the same default and hit create. So this will create for us a, a simple Blazor server project that will kind of just work. In fact, let's just verify that because it's always good to verify that your application is working before you start making modifications. So that's one of those little pro tips there that um, hopefully won't bite you as it has bitten so many others. So here's our, our working application. We've got the counter page, woohoo, fetch data. You know, it's, it's all there. It's a, a simple Blazor server application. It works. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus in on just modifying the index page. So we're gonna go to the index page and we're gonna rip this thing apart. All right, so we're gonna get rid of the survey prompt and the welcome and we're gonna say, this is the upload demo. All right, and we'll actually change index to upload demo as well or upload demo app, there we go. 
And now this is our page. Okay, this is a, the the basics of what our page should be. We're going to um, add in our input file, and we're going to say for now that's it. Okay, uh, that that's all you really need to have an input file. Now it's not going to do anything because we have no place to to save the files yet. So and also we're not going to upload just one file, we want multiple. So this right here says, okay, this is a file input element, but I want you to allow multiple files to be uploaded at once, not just one at a time. So we're allow multiple files in that one picker, but we need to be able to, to store these files. So let's say a code section, and we're going to say private async task, and we're going to call this uh, load files, I think. And we're going to say input uh, file change event args e. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to capture whenever the upload file uh, picker gets chosen. So when you are done choosing files, you hit OK, it's going to trigger this upload files. So to do that, we need to say on change equals at load files. So this is now complete. We now have a complete file input picker. Now, if you are familiar with HTML, you'll know that's not an HTML tag. But what happens is this is a Blazor server tag that will get converted over to the proper HTML tag. And we'll see that when we run this. But we should probably do something with these files. So let's do this. Let's um, let's set some things up. I'm going to go, I want to keep this as, as tight and as quick as possible. So I'm going to explain as I go, but we're going to create a bunch of code here. So let's start with a private long. And we're going to say max file size. And this is the size in bytes that the maximum file can be. And we need to specify this because if you don't specify a file size, then they could upload terabytes of data. We don't want that. We want this to be limited. And so we're going to say that the size limit is three megabytes, but you can't just say three because that's three bytes. Well, three megabytes is a very large number. We could put in here the actual value of how are, it's like three million um, bytes, but we're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to say 1024, which equals one kilobyte. So every, every kilobyte is 1024 bytes. We're going to say times 1024 because every 1024 kilobytes is one megabyte. We're going to say times three. So this value right here is a constant. It's a calculation that's made a constant. But because he put it in this format, it's much easier to read. We've got bytes, kilobytes, megabytes. So now you can see that we've got three megabytes. All right. Again, if you wanted to calculate that out and just put that really long number in here, you could do so. But um, it seems simpler to do this way. And you can also say um, uh, represents three megabytes. Okay. So if you ever wondered why is three megabytes not just three million, it's because of the 1024. So there you go. All right. That's the first thing we're going to do. Next, we're going to say, let's create a private int, and this will be a max allowed files. And we're going to say three files for now. And what this allows you to do is say, hey, you know what? You can't upload more than the maximum number of files. If you decide that with your multiple picker, you can allow as many as you want, well, they could upload their entire hard drive as long as each file was less than three megabytes. So that'd be a problem. If you had, you know, 10,000, 100,000 files being uploaded, that might not be what you intend for your server. So we're going to say, hey, let's create a maximum files allowed we're going to limit to three, but notice these are all changeable. Now I could pull these even from the app settings. So if you want to do that, you could, but 
I'm going to put them right in and hard code them. That's fine. Okay. And then I'm going to create a private list of string that I call errors equals no. What this will be is this will be a, a list of, hey, anytime you have an error, I want to see it. So what we're going to do is up here, we're going to say as if errors.count is greater than zero, then we'll have an h2 that says errors. And we're going to have um, a ul with a class equal to text-danger. In uh, This is Bootstrap 5 class, and that's going to be a red text. We're going to say for each uh, var, let's go e in errors. We could also say error. That'll work. Um, we're going to say li at error. And this will just display a list of the, of the errors that are present that have been triggered. Okay, so we're going to capture a list of any errors we occur that occur because we're not going to capture into somewhere else. We're not going to do anything more, you know, fancy with validation. We're just going to say, hey, capture these errors and put them in a list. So with that being said, let's start working on our, um, our list here. So we're going to say errors.clear. That's the first we're going to do. We're going to clear out the error list. So we're starting over again, loading files. So let's clear out any errors that had occurred. Maybe they uploaded too many files and now we're saying, hey, wait, back off. Let's uh, start again, try again with one file. So we want to clear that error list because we're starting over. So now the next thing is we're going to check to see how many files are being uploaded. If e.filecount is greater than max allowed files. Well, we're going to say errors.add and let's do string interpolation here and say error attempting to upload uh, e dot file count files, but only, and let's unpin this here so you can see it, but only um, max files allowed, files are allowed. Let's not put an L at the end of that. Um, so what this is doing is just saying, hey, we've got an error here that if you have more files being uploaded than we allow, we're just going to put that as an error statement in our list. And because this is Blazor, if we add something to this list and we have this check up here, it says, hey, if the error.count is greater than zero, display this. What's going to happen is as soon as we add this error, it's going to display this H2 section with that error. We'll see that in a little bit, but we're not done yet. We also have to return. So, hey, if we're if we're not going to um, allow it to go on, let's not even continue. We're done. We're just going to say, hey, there's an error, and we're done. But now let's allow the um, the thing to continue since we know that we have less than or equal to a maximum number of files allowed. So for each var file in e dot get multiple files or I say max allowed files. This is kind of a check um, because at this point we're saying, hey, you know what? I want you to limit it to only this number of files. All right, that's the maximum file count, but we've already checked to make sure we're good, but we're just gonna double check here. So with that being the case, what we're gonna do is let's start creating a, a place to store this. Okay, so the first thing I do is we're gonna create a new file name. And the reason why is because, well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, we don't want to trust the user. If the user puts some text in the file name that might uh, cause a problem with our code or with an insert or something else, maybe some file or a file name that's not allowed, whatever the case may be, we don't want to trust that. Now, you should still also protect yourself in other ways, but this is one of those ways that you can protect yourself 
by not allowing the same file name. The other thing is if you're putting a bunch of files in one directory, let's say that you put all users profile pictures in one directory. Well, if I called my picture picture one.jpg and somebody else uploaded picture one.jpg, what happens? Well, you'd have a file conflict. You'd have one file overwriting the other, and that's not what you want in most cases. So what you want to do usually is rename the files. So we're going to do that. We're going to rename our files to be something, um, something new. And so what we're going to do is say string new file name equals path. This is like provided by Microsoft in the system.io namespace path dot change extension. Okay. So we're going to change the file extension because we want to uh, first path dot get random file name, which get random file name is going to get you a random file name but it's going to give you a random file name with a random extension. I don't want that. I want the extension of whatever they're passing in. So I'm going to say path.get extension of file.name. Okay, that's a long statement there. But what that's doing is it's getting the file they're passing in and saying, hey, what's the name you provided? I want just the extension of that name. And I'm going to add on to it the random file name with the extension of whatever you passed in. So we're going to trust the extension, but not the file name. We're going to have that be the new file name. So that's our first thing. We got a new file name. And by the way, um, you can follow along by typing in. I would encourage you to do that because it is going to help you with that muscle memory. But it also sometimes is helpful to watch the first time and then maybe type the second time. But you can also use the link in the description to download this source code. Um, you just need to provide your email address and it will be emailed to you. Um, and that way uh, you don't have to retype exactly. You can try again or test your code. So let's quick actions refactoring here. Um, let's try it. Come on. Well, it's not pop popping up. Okay. No worries. Well, let's do it manually. I'm going to um, put these on new lines that we kind of crunch these down. I can't crunch this down as easily because of the fact that it's string interpolation, but um, I kind of could if I did this. This is a new feature of, of um, .NET 7, but we're not going to. Um, and yeah, it's, it's yelling at me. Um, but let's just continue on. We'll not worry about this as much. Okay. So Let's continue on and get the path that you want to capture. So we're going to capture the path of where you want to store these files. Um, actually, it's just a string. String path equals path.combine. You want to combine a number of different things. First of all, we want a, a starting point. Where are you going to start from? We're going to capture that in just a minute. And then the next thing I want to combine is this is something that you should consider. And that is whenever a logged in user gives you a file that you put, you create a folder for that logged in user and put the file in that folder. So we're going to pretend that I'm logged in as T Corey. This is one of those places where we're doing a shortcut because if you were, um, you know, set up authentication, you would know who the logged in user is. But since we're not setting up authentication, we don't. Therefore, we're going to pretend it's T Corey. Um, and we're going to store it there. But that would be the place where you would put the logged in user's username. And that'd be part of the path. You'll see that in just a minute. And then we're going to say new file name. So what this does, this path.combine, is it takes it and it combines the path into a full path. And it's going to try and do it um, in an operating system independent way so that it can do it right for the operating system it's on. Um, but it's going to combine these folders and files into a valid path. Now, that's the first thing right here we're missing. We need to capture something from the configuration, which we don't have yet. So let's go over to appsetting.json. And I'm going to say 
file storage is the name. And we're going to give us a path. And the path I'm going to give it is I've got a temp folder here. We're going to go to storage. And storage is where I'm going to store all the files we upload. So I'm going to copy that path. I'm going to paste it in here. Notice it escapes out our slash. So it creates double slashes. That's what we want. We want to have those double slashes because it's, it's escaping it properly. So, all right. Um, that's the initial path for our file storage. So now we need to capture that or get that from the configuration, which we don't have a way of doing that yet. We, we've not yet brought it in from our source code. So we need to inject this I configuration. We'll call it config. Now, how am I injecting this? What's well, the dependency injection? And where is this coming from? Well, this is part of the base package that ASP.NET Core gives you. Now, I encourage you, um, here's a little side tip. Um, if you're deciding, hey, I want to be a Blazor developer, learn ASP.NET Core first, the actual base. Learn about the dependency injection. Learn about appsetting.json and the five types that it creates and so many other things that are kind of base to all ASP.NET Core projects. And then from there, you can add on Blazor and it'll be much easier because these stuff, this stuff will be kind of baked in already and you understand what's going on. So with that, we now want to get the value. Now I could pull us off into a separate variable, but let's do it right in line. So we're going to say config dot get value. And let's unpin this. We have a little more space to see. Uh, get value of type string. And we're going to say that the value is file storage. And that's the, the name of the, um, the node over here. So file storage, that's what we're going to look for we say get string. So with that, it's yelling at me because it says, hey, that could be null. Because I'm not positive that this exists. Well, I am, and we're going to just say exclamation point at the end saying, yes, we know this exists. We could do a null check on this, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so we could, you know, pull this out, make sure it exists or an exception if it doesn't, but um, we're not going to in this particular case. But let's put these on new lines so that it's a little easier to see. Okay, so now we have the path to where that file should go, including its file name, which is why we're putting it inside the for each because that path will change because it includes the file name. All right, so now we need to do a directory dot create directory. Um, and we're gonna combine just the first two pieces here uh, so we're going to say path.combine again, and we're going to copy just these, um, these first two things. Because if we include the file name, that will create the directory with that file name. It, it causes a little bit of a problem. Um, so this way, what we're going to do is we're going to create a directory that is um, that root path, which by the way is right here, storage, right? But then there's a tcori folder, which does not exist yet. And so make sure that that full path, including tcori exists. Since it doesn't, it's gonna create that directory. So again, we could probably pull this apart and you know recombine it in different ways to not repeat ourselves, but there's repetition here is not a big deal. So I'm gonna leave it alone and keep going. You want to upload files. That's the whole point. So we're going to say await using file stream fs equals new. We're passing the path and the file mode is create. Okay, so we're going to pass in our path, which is the entire thing, including the file name. And we're going to say, hey, let's go ahead and create that we're going to create it as a file stream. But that file stream just, just opens up the connections. Okay, when you put values in this stream, they'll be saved to this file. 
All right, but we need to actually use that file stream. So how do we do that? We say await file dot open read stream max file size. That's important. So we're saying, hey, you can only do this to the max file size. And then we're going to say copy to async the file stream. So we're opening a read stream that's maximum of this given file size, three megabytes. And we're saying, okay, I want you to file, which is from our for each of the files that you're uploading. I want to open a read stream to you and I want to copy you asynchronously to our currently open file stream. And so it will save the, the data to that file stream we're going to await the completion of that. And then we go to this curly brace. Well, what happens at the curly brace? Well, at the curly brace, what's going to happen is that we're done. And so it's going to close out the file stream because we opened it with a using statement. So that's important to add that using statement because it's going to properly close the stream when we get to the closing curly brace. Now, so far, this is all kind of like the happy path. It's going to work, no problem, we're good to go. But what if it doesn't work? Well, let's do this. Let's I'm gonna actually cut this. It's just easiest. You can do a, just, you know, right click and say, um, it's, I think it's annotation now. Nope. Um, oh, they don't even have it on, on the um, Razor pages. But there is a way to wrap this with a, uh, a try. Um, so, but it is just cut it out and do a try. And we'll say EX and we'll paste in our code. All right. So that's just the easiest way to put a try catch if you didn't already do that. Um, I should have done it at the beginning, but I didn't. So we now have this code wrapped in a try, which means if there's anything that goes wrong, um, you know, file system doesn't have permission and et cetera, then it will throw an exception. And by the way, this is important. Your, whatever you're running your uh, Blazor server as, whatever user is running your Blazor server, that's the user that has to have permission to whatever directory you're telling it to. And when you put this on IIS or you put this on, um, you know, whatever Linux server, whatever hosting system you have, Nginx, whatever, um, if whatever you put it on, that usually does not run under your account. It runs under a service account. And so that service account has to have permission to whatever directory you're pointing to, which is why this could work in development and not work when you deploy it. Because the fact that your permissions changed because when you run it in development, you're running it under your account and you don't run services under your account normally. So just kind of a heads up there. So we don't want to rethrow an exception here. We just want to capture it. Error dot or errors dot add. Remember we had that list and we're going to say string interpolation file and we'll say the file name. Error ex dot message. Now there's something to be that's important here that we're not dealing with. And again, it's because of a demo purposes, but I want you to think through, we're going to talk more about this in best practices at the end of the series, um, or in video seven or six of the series. Um, and that is this right here. We're using the file.name. Now we're only using it in a list, which is putting it on the page as a, um, encoded and protected, but still, you need to think very carefully about using the name that they give you. Be careful of that, okay? Normally what I'd do is I'd probably do some cleanup on this where I would do um, some intentional uh, encoding of it or you know, removing all non-alpha um, characters or alphanumeric characters, um, some things like that to try and protect this from a malicious attack, okay? In our case, we're just gonna put file.name. We're trying to keep this um, simple and working. Okay, so now we've, done, we've written a lot of code, um, but 
we now have a working, hopefully, application. So let's run this. Wait for it to run. Okay, so we've got the, the page that says, hey, upload demo. Let's bring this over. And I want to show you something. I do have a folder called to upload. And it's got some faces in there. It's my team, um, as well as a test text document. So let's try to upload those files to uh, D temp storage. So I'm going to choose and I'm going to say, hey, go to that folder. And there we go. And I can choose to upload. Um, let's go and just upload myself for now. I hit open. And notice what happened on the right. We now have a folder called T Corey. If you open that folder, there is a file in there that's my headshot. But note that the file name is i 40 or oe 3 gelping Well, what's that? That's our randomly generated name, but yet the extension that I chose. Because notice that to upload, it says timheadshot.ping. This says something different dot ping. But if I were to go back here and upload my headshot again, it uploads a second time because it has a different name. And that's one of those why that randomly generated name is so helpful because you can actually have multiple files. Now you might say, well, I want to preserve that file name. You could, and we'll talk more about that when we talk about uploading a SQL and how to capture some of that information. But I would recommend that your actual file name be converted to this random um, gibberish because that will protect you against duplication. Now notice also it created that folder called tcori. So let's do this. Let's delete tcori. Let's choose files. And this time we're going to choose um, three files, these three. Hit open. It's chosen three files. We have tcori over here. We have three files. And that text file, by the way, is a simple, and this is a test, okay, just to show that we're we're doing something, but it's working. Again, we can delete it or not, but let's choose this time all five files. And as is error, attempting to upload five files, but only three files are allowed. So there's our error. We choose again, let's choose just Tom this time and we hit open. And now that works and Tom is over in the folder. So We've got our multiple file uploads working. We have our limit on the number of files and these files aren't very big. Um, we're talking a, a megabyte and a half for most of them. Let's look at the, um, mine's even a uh, half megabyte. So let's do this. Let's limit it to only being one megabyte. So we're gonna go back over to, let's close our code out. We could have refreshed it, but that's, um, it's easy this way. So. Let's run it again. And now it's representing one megabyte, not three, which means that I shouldn't be able to upload my team, just, just me. So if I upload Noah and hit open, error. Okay, that size is that large. That's the size that is the maximum. And again, this is what we would put in our code normally. Uh, let's zoom in here a little bit so you can see it. Um, that number, so 1,048,576. Unless you're a kind of a geek, you probably don't know that represents one megabyte. But when we put in our code 1024 times 1024 times one, it made it a little easier to understand. And this is, again, it's 1.5 megabytes roughly, but um, knowing that is, is a little tricky. So this now also allows us to limit the file size to only files that are within the range we're expecting. So that's kind of the basics of it, but let's get a little bit more specific here. Let's close this back out, move this off again. And let's say, you know what? I don't want to allow, let's go back up, bring up our, our storage again. I'm sorry, to upload. And notice we have this text document, but we want to only allow you to upload an image for your profile picture. And uploading a text document, isn't a good profile picture. So let's delete the T Corey again, and we're going to only allow pings or JPEGs. So ping files or JPEG files, that's it. How we do that? Well, what we do is we come here to our input file and we say accept equals 
and we'll say dot png and we'll put a comma and say dot jpg and we'll put another comma and put dot jpeg okay and you can put as many as you want here um, but this is going to limit to only certain file types so let's run this again and again i'm not using hot reload but i could um, but it's just for demo purposes if i use hot reload i have to move everything off the screen put it back on and just it seems simpler not to uh, for demo purposes so we've got our storage here where it's got nothing in it let's choose some files notice the text document's gone it's still there but when i look for it it's not there because of the fact that it says hey you can only upload these files so that's our limiter to say hey you know what that's all that's allowed now i could say all files and see that i hit upload and it does upload well so what good was that well the good of it was that it's not aligned them by default however if you want to say you know what no i want to force you to not allow anything but ping files or jpeg files then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to validate the files themselves you're going to, need to say hey when we're going to upload the easiest check is first to check to see what the extension is if the extension is not png jpeg or jpeg then no i'm not gonna allow you but you'll probably need to go a little bit further and look at the mime type and make sure that um, the data matches up with a valid image image file or whatever file you're trying to upload but the easiest thing the, the simplest um what's going to solve most of your problems Okay, the 20% the effort for 80% of results is to have this file type here and say, we're only allowing this. But it's not the it's not a security thing. It's just a, um, a clarity thing to say, hey, this is what we're allowing. Uh, so, you know, plan accordingly. Okay, so that's how you would do that. But I want to show you also, let's hit F12 here. Yes, open developer tools um don't care the welcome message we want to look at let's pop this out um okay if you don't know how to use developer tools in chrome or in edge i'd highly encourage you to learn how to do that i have a whole course on being a web developer in fact the web developer master course is focused in web development html css and javascript but a big part of it as well is learning how to use these tools because if and here's another pro tip if you want to be a blazor server developer or an asp.net core developer or any web developer you need absolutely need to have a good foundation in html css and some javascript um, because if you don't you will still be able to do a job but you will make significant mistakes and mistakes that are not easily visible at first. So I would encourage you, learn those foundational things. It's very, very, very important. Um, part of that is knowing how to use your browser tools. So let's look at, if we inspect this file upload, and let's um, now zoom in on this. There we go. This is what it actually looks like in HTML. So we saw it said uh, input file, but it's actually just an input type. And the um, type is, oops, the type is file. So that's what it translates to an actual HTML. Notice it says multiple here, and notice it says accept equals. That accept just gets passed right through to this because it's not actually in the Blazor server object input file. So instead, um, it passes it through to the input and attaches it directly there, which means you can also apply classes the same way. So if we were to, let's move this off. Um, let's just move this off for now. And if I were to say, now this right here, actually both of these, just drop right to the input uh, since they're not actually on input file. Another one that you can do the same thing with is class or ID, but let's go class. So we're gonna say class equals, and we're going to say this is the uh, form, um, form control, I believe. Yep, form control. And this will apply the class form control, just like you would with an HTML element. And I hit save here. It's going to refresh the page. And now we have a different look for our 
picker. So it's a little different. Um, it still works. So it's still, you grab those three and hit upload. Um, it looks like two of them are too large, but um, if we, you know, um, if we look, actually, if we go to the file, notice that tcore is there. We actually have three files, but two of them are zero bytes. And the reason why is because that file stream was created, but we had the error. And so it closed it out, but it's now empty. Now, again, here's another pro tip. If you check the file size first, then you won't even create the file stream. Or if you create the file stream and you notice you have an exception, you could check to see if that file stream um, should, or that file should be then deleted. So a couple things you could do there, but um, those are zero byte files. The only one that actually uploaded was my face because my face is only half a megabyte. So uh, it probably has to do with having less hair. So that's, you know, that's how to view that, but also that's how to style these things using that, that pass through on the file input. Anything that the file input does not know how to deal with. So it knows how to deal with on change. It goes, I got that. That's me, which because this is a blazer control, but it converts into an HTML control. And so it says, if I don't know about something, like class, it doesn't know about class. So what it does is it takes the entire element and puts it on the input that it generates on the HTML page. So therefore, anything that works in HTML will work here. So that's why you can style it with class, we can put ID on it, we can do you know pretty much anything else you would do with a normal HTML control. So at the end of the day, Blazor is just creating HTML controls. So, um, so that's how to upload a file. Now we are not done. We are not done by far because right now we're just uploading files, but how you actually associate that with data? How do you say, okay, this is connected to Tim Corey. This is connected to, you know, Sue Storm, whoever. Um, we do that by including this file input as part of a form in form upload. However, if you noticed that on change, we ran this, this method that uploaded the files. So it uploaded the files right away as soon as you selected them. But in a form, you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to wait until we submit the form and the form is valid. So we're going to see how to do that in the next video. I encourage you to come back for that. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.